to D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. Join our various gaming groups as we play the 5th Edition of Dungeons & Dragons. And maybe just hang out and chat about gaming in general. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. When I die, you guys get my stuff and she gets my... Um... What is that? Residue? She has a written contract to get your corpse. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can, yeah. maybe we can put your essence in a steam jack and you can <laughs> <laughs> If I die, please take that in. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, I don't think anybody else in the group has proficiency in steam jacks. Uh, I was almost going to go supporting character or class for that, but then I was like, eh. You want to kill shit. Yeah, I figured we needed some more regular firepower. Yeah, and I was going to, but I wanted to melt metal with my voice, because that just sounds No, that's awesome. cool. Especially in a Steam Jack world. Yeah. Like a boss. <laughs> All right. So we're sitting and drinking. Sounds like everybody's here. Yep. Is everybody back? Oh, yes, yes, I'm here. I was totally going to ask that and hadn't asked that yet. Yes, I'm back. I'm I'm late, so I'm not back yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Actually, this is just a recording. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave your name and number, and Thea will get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, much like in uh, the the show Arcane, they do have uh, record players. That 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 is a technology <laughs> that does exist. Phonograph. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Well then, I am going to add. I also want to be a recording star. <laughs> 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 yes. I, I feel like I'm with Box the band. hero. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Is that why we go? Because they play your stuff on repeat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. You guys have to stop and sign a record. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not there yet, but one day. One day you'll you'll be you'll you'll have that throat singing down pat where everyone just wants to come and hear you sing. <laughs> and then there's the first problem when you melt metal with your voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or drums. Why did all yeah. the wax recordings melt? <laughs> but think of how fascinating an alchemical process that would be to be able to record a voice onto wax. <laughs> I'm just saying. Not wrong. Okay. Truly, the high, one of the highest forms of alch- alchemical expression. Yeah, so backs against the wall, corner somewhere, wherever we're sitting. Bobby have a, a preferred table in there, I would think. I, I like how you threw out the backs against the wall part. So yep. you guys, you know, it, it's, it's comfortably in the afternoon past the lunch rush. So you have the quietness of the... Uh, of your favorite drinking hole as you're all sitting back there just relaxing, killing time outside the door because there's no jacks allowed inside, of course. 
is uh, Gunny sitting there parked with the other Jacks. It's kind of sad seeing them all sitting out there, you know. Furnace is turned well, off. We don't serve wasting. their kind. Well, nobody wants a diesel engine inside an enclosed building. Uh, yeah. Okay. Gunny, Gunny can see like pictures, right? <laughs> like a book. Okay. As everybody keeps it's reminding her, it's just a steam jacket. It's not a person. We don't know that. <laughs> not for sure. So they like have like little hitching stalls for yep, steam so jackets. you can park your jacks outside. <laughs> hey, folks come from the factories with their jacks. I mean, so you guys are at right. the uh, rusty screw and you know join drawing some drinks, getting, you know, just chit-chatting with each other as, you know, you hear uh, Scoot, he's he's one of the local, you know, regulars that's there, and he's he's sitting there talking about how, you know, five years, it's, it's hard to believe it's been five years since, you know, things have changed, and things have gotten even worse since those, you know, the Invernals came, and you know, and of course, you know, he starts reminiscing and you all get your flashbacks of wherever you were five years ago when the demons basically came from hell to drag souls, you know, back with them. The claiming, got to say it in the southern yeah, accent. Got that claiming. like thousand yard war yeah. scare. And uh, pretty much, you know, uh, the bartender senses the, the mood drop in the bar. So uh, he, he kind of like throws everybody out a little more grog. It's the it's the swill drink of the house, or uh, we'll come up with a good nice. name for it. Probably nice. called uh, Rust Water. It's slightly, oh, yeah, that's right. a good one. slightly yeah. brackish looking it's drink. About that color. And he he basically you know has the you know one bartender she goes around you know pouring everybody a refill just to try to light the mood, and all of a sudden the doors swing open and you see four city watch come walking in, and of course. <clears throat> everybody's kind of like gets quiet. Yeah, everybody stops <laughs> talking about plans and rolls up parchments <clears throat> that they've been drawing things on and putting it in their pockets. You know, whatever nefariousness was being planned gets put to a halt. Is immediately you guys kind of look but don't look. I mean, you totally have that moment of the look but don't look that everyone is doing in the in in the bar, and uh, except me, <laughs> because I'm like, look, huh, you know, go bed. Whatever, you know. <laughs> See, because I'm not as typically afraid of the watches, uh-huh. you know. And, and immediately, right. yeah. Theo looks up and sees uh, Lieutenant Pratchett's kind of like, he's doing the, the look. Pratchett. Pratchett. Pratchett's giving the look, you know, he's, he's, he's literally looking from corner to corner to corner, getting the feel of who's in, you know, the, the bar at the moment. And then he kind of like takes a moment and gestures to, to his his three compatriots go take a seat over at the side and kind of kind of beelines without rushing towards your general direction. And you have a moment before he gets here if there's anything you want to do. I just stare yeah, at him. <laughs> I take a sip of my lovely drink. I, I've added a little extra to it to make it, you know, more palatable. <laughs> You know, just a little concoction of mine. Because I think we're about to get into something horrible. I take a big gulp of my drink. (laughs) I have to kind of keep swishing it to make sure it's salt, you know, completely dissolves into it. How far away is uh, he's he's coming across the room. You can see he's clearly coming right towards you, but uh, you you've got a moment. No, oh, Gunny. Gunny, Gunny is down. outside. Yeah, I'm like, just staring him down. Is he, within he is outside of the 20 foot telepathic range. As no. you kind of wince no. over no. at uh, Callus for wanting to sit with his back to the wall on the opposite side of the bar. It would be nice if you had you were against the wall where he was at. But not. Maybe that spot wasn't available. Well, it's not your regular table. You want to see danger coming before it gets here. Yeah. Don't we have a regular table together that's uh-huh. like that? But, but not I close assume. to good. But yeah, that's okay. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Nah, I'm just, I'm glaring him down like, this better not be some bullshit. 
you know, better be, you know, not here to harass us. Oh, well, I'm hoping it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking at the night I wake. I'm like, yeah, it's been a slow day. Let's let's go. <laughs> and uh, Patrick, I'm totally gonna get. <laughs> Patrick kind of tries to look nonchalant. At the last minute, he does this. I look to the left. I look to the right. Oh, is this seat free? The one seat that has its back to the door that y'all never use. And he does the uh, prototypical, turns the chair backwards so he can sit without his coat, you know, catching on the chair because he's got his full shoreman's coat going on there. Tricorn hat, which he... he nicely takes off and puts on a clear spot of your chair and he turns the chair around and then sits down with a slight uh, harumph noise as as he just kind of quietly looks at you all for a second without saying anything letting you all be the first to speak and but we're we he's our contact but we're not our so we're like he's like a he's a cop um, that you're friendly with Okay, but when we say friendly, how friendly? Friendly in that he, he like, knows you guys are who, what you are, and he lets you do what you do. I mean, so, um, but at the okay. same time, he has to bust their chops publicly sometimes. Exactly. Shit, yeah. So, so <clears throat> I'm just gonna say, afternoon, officer. And, and he kind of gives you know the 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 look up and down at our you know bell caller here because he's just like you know he, he, he he's afraid of the day that you 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 go nuts here and something happens <laughs> there is that that momentary fear of a trollkin in full swing that that can blow walls out with his voice he just he looks at you guys and you know he he, he takes a moment rubs his chin looks back at the table where his uh, compatriots are sitting at and says afternoon my friends so, uh, I was just coming to see, uh, how y'all are doing, and I, I, I noticed poor Gunny outside. His, uh, stacks seem to be burning mighty, mighty soft there. As you can totally see, he's buttering you up, and he totally <laughs> gives the look to, uh, just you guys, like he's waiting to see if you'll, you'll bite the hook. I just roll my eyes. <clears throat> now, who does he need? You into look? Oh, go, go ahead, ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to be a smart no, elk. Go ahead. Totally go for it. <laughs> By all means, be a smart elk. <laughs> I was going to say, you into looking at the um, Jack stacks? And, and wow. he kind of smirks with <laughs> a little connotation there. And he's like, well... I'm going to smile huge, because I think this is awesome that he came to get his defense. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes when uh, you're you're looking for help, but you can't give coin, and he kind of, like, reaches at that point when he says coin into his little purse, pulls out some coins and stacks them on the table and waves over to the uh, bartender, and also gestures back to his friend's table and stacks up a nice little... Little stack of coins for obviously enough booze for your table and their table. And uh, he he kind of pauses, waiting to see if you know his table gets served first, which it does. And he says, uh, "I'm looking to see if I can uh, get some help from my friends." And he just gives you guys the the, the smile that that you know goes across all of you that he's he's got something on all of you at one point or another. And uh, who does he normally see as, like, the leader of your group? Well, I would say either Callus or um, uh, the Bard, because don't they have the highest charisma? But probably not the Bard, because he is a trollkin, and so they have Callus, a reputation. Then. But yeah. this, well, I don't know, or the smart people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I mean... <laughs> I'm smart. I'm very smart. I mean, I know what you... I don't know what all you... <laughs> you do. just hate it well. <laughs> your crap. <laughs> she just chemically alters it. We'll get to the point. And, 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 and he looks at Callus and he kind of kind of reaches in to pull out his, his little monogrammed handkerchief and wipes his brow. And he says, well, 
you see, my, my friends and I have a job coming up that uh, we're kind of on, behind the gun to take care of. And I was looking to see if uh, I could hire my, my friends to help me out with this situation in exchange for, and he totally looks right at Mia. Mia? Yeah. As he says, in exchange for a week's worth of coal for a steam jack. Which, by the way, out of character, you, t you totally know that that's like a hundred gold for for a, a thousand pounds of coal. From having dealt with him before, is he? Do I know that he is someone that can be negotiated with? I mean, you can try to negotiate with him, but the fact that he's offering you uh, two thousand pounds of coal to be delivered to a location of your choosing—that's that's that's literally like a hundred gold coins in your pocket. Okay. Except okay. you, okay. I'll except you all know that you know since it's coming from the city watch, this is one of those deals where it would be the watch wagon just drops it off at whatever location you give you, and then it's up to you guys to make sure you get it back to where you need to go. It's gonna totally fall off the back of the truck, so to speak. <laughs> okay. Well, sweet face, you know exactly the words to my heart. What are we? What are we talking about? Here? Could, Anonymous cart that's just left for us, so we can take it back to our. Oh place. no, it doesn't. Count. It doesn't uh, count we would cart. be parked there so that it. Basically, you you write down a cross street, and that's where the cart will will dump its load. Yeah. So. At a specific time. That's a very nice deal. With, with that kind of a deal, what are we looking at? Well, unfortunately, my uh, <clears throat> my my squad has a. Uh, duty that we've been tasked to go after a group known as the Jackknives. Which, you know, when he mentions that you've heard of them, they're, they're some low-rent scumbags. They're, they're known for knifing sailors, you know, douchebaggy things. Lame name. You know, and uh, unfortunately we're a little understaffed right now. Right now, yeah. That's what you always say. I mean, as, as as the watch commander said, any day now we'll be getting that uh, stipends to help get some more watch. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm looking to see if I can uh, have my friends. And of course, you know, he definitely emphasizes with the hand gestures, the friends help us on a little uh, midnight raid on a warehouse down at the waterfront. And uh, what are we stealing? I'll, I'll, I'll even throw in uh, that you can take as much as you can carry in a flour sack as, as, as extra compensation, as long as it's not in a flour as sack. long as it's not property that's already been claimed for recovery. What property is in this warehouse? Are we we're supposed to get back a specific property, or are we just supposed to write the place? And, and he, he he looks over at you and just you know rubs his chin and does the whole that's that's a good question. And he reaches into his coat pocket and pulls out a scroll. That he kind of very presentedly opens up to just himself so you can't see and, so, and you can see from the glow through the paper it's a large list of handwritten things it's, it's, it's you know it's like a good 30 40 things on this list and he just gives you the look over the, sc the, the, the scroll that uh, it's there, there's allegedly quite a few items that are needing to be recovered in this warehouse but I, I'm sure in addition, and he totally looks at Mia to the a week's worth of coal for a steam jack, and just lets that linger. There, there should be some some items that 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 you all could use, as well as my eternal gratitude and friendship. <laughs> and of course, when he throws that out there, you're you're literally hearing that's his tagline. My in exchange for my eternal gratitude and friendship has been said many times. Mm. Well, I'm feeling friendly, but I'm so, for whatever the group is. So what, who's this benefiting? Uh, it's, it's helping to protect 
our island and and the citizens here from a uh, group of nefarious thieves and smugglers and he just shakes his head like that alone should be great as a citizen that alone should be enough <laughs> yeah okay because obviously the property belongs to somebody else <laughs> were these people friends of yours at one time Oh, no, no. Unfortunately, I, I know very little about the jackknives. Yeah, but who did the property belong to? That's the question that we're talking as, about. But as, that's you know, a, he's not forthcoming. The property actually belongs to a uh, shipping company that uh, claims hmm. that currently it is closed. Claims okay. that it is currently closed. So we okay. shouldn't be concerned if there's and, collateral damage. And now that's one bag each, right? And, and he just kind of <laughs> glares that 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 Theo for trying to alter the deal further. Are you? I'm not are you going for in? Are you going for negotiation? Yeah, said. Can um, I can I assist? Because I was going to try to. <laughs> Okay, so then we have this little negotiation montage going on as there's some sweet, sweet yeah. jazz happening. <laughs> oh, can you tell me practicing? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, you're in a bar. It's there's obviously a bard in the pot in the ale house. Right. In the background. She's fighting for first chair, so she's challenging for the first chair. She's That's yeah, awesome. Nice. You're good. Okay, so uh, go ahead and give me a persuasion roll there, uh, Theo, with with advantage since you and me are going back and forth helping. And he's just, dude, yeah, his little ahead. little head is going back and forth, looking at the two of you, realizing that that you guys are the are the hard sell. Yeah, it's like, yeah, let the guy with the looks do it. <laughs> Never mind, we're jumping in. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm like so loved. It was just a valid question, um, yeah. but okay, I'll risk it. No, I got a. Nap. Well, you got an eight, thank <laughs> God, because now you're not having to pay for yeah. it. As he's like, well, maybe I should give you less coal if you're negotiating with me. <laughs> so, so you base. It's a valid you, question. You, you, so, he did not you specify. You two ladies are going who's back sad. and forth, trying to trying to you know trick him out of so, more. So I, you just, I'm not trying to trick anybody. I'm asking for clarification. We are just friends talking. <laughs> um, can, um, where do we currently sit in terms of the favor balance? Uh, currently, he's looked away more than you guys have helped him out at the moment. Maybe that's part of the So nice we do sort there. of owe him. As he kind of like, he just wrinkles his nose but hides it by us. Uh, Strong, long drink from his cup. As he's, he's and, and trying he, to be polite, and not oh. uh, not not show you the disdain in his face right now, but you clearly see it. And, and uh, we'll, uh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just gonna. Um, and you you can ensure that there won't be any government I involvement. In the area. Well, well, that that's that's kind of the the brass gears of the the situation is my friends and I will actually be raiding the complex at the exact time, and we're looking to see if you can help oh. us on the raid. I mean, of course. Oh, so we. So it's sanctioned, yes. Yeah, sanctioned agents so. of the government. Well, not not sanctioned so far as. We're appreciating your assistance. If and if you can uh, see about giving us some information before the raid, and then uh, joining in to make sure, because unfortunately the eight of us are not sufficient for this to cover every exit. We're hoping that uh, the four of us that will be on the boat and the the, the rest of us will be able to cover enough doors, so to speak. Eight isn't enough? Eight isn't enough. And you guys know that when it comes to like a warehouse raid, as soon as it gets raided, they run yeah. like rats in every direction, you know. Eight, mm -hmm. eight cops is not yeah. enough for well, this, this raid. 
Yeah, and well, you know, part of it's just laboring everything out of there too. So, so I'm like, sounds like a good deal. Apologize for my excited friends. But, they were hearing a bargain and they were looking to get, negotiate. I was asking a valid question. <laughs> so, I, uh, you know, <laughs> sweet talk them a little bit and cover up and move on and like, yes, yeah, we'll be happy to take care of your business for you. <laughs> As he just he just totally puts his drink down and pretends to wipe his mouth, but he's hiding the smirk when you, when you're saying that of just like I understand. I mean, uh, and, and you definitely get the idea that the, the steam jack that you all own is part of why he's wanting you know you guys specifically rather than just any ragamuffins. Right. I mean, yep. bringing a steam jack to the party that 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 adds a lot. Bringing a a, a crack yep. shot party. that brings a lot. Bringing someone who can blow things yep. up, that's a lot. Bringing a troll can on any night, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so we'll accept it. Like I said, I sugarcoat and, and apologize on one side and then, yeah, a little insult at the end there. <laughs> As uh, he basically uh, pulls out a smaller scroll of paper that's got uh, the address written down on it. You, you guys know the general area. And uh, you, you've you've heard enough of the jackknives, you know that these guys could in the future be competition. Is is one of the big things too. I'll totally let you know in on that uh, they these guys could be competing with you in the same racket for smuggling. The jack wagons. Jackknives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Whatever. you haven't had confrontations <laughs> yet, but better to cut off the competition before it becomes competition. So uh, he basically they're, gives you the note. Alive. It's got uh, his initials on the top left corner, so you you know he can identify it. You can identify it, and uh, he basically just tells you uh, write the address you would like the cold delivered to, and uh, give me that note back once 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 we're all said and done. All right. Well, we give him a location that's. Somewhere out of the way, but in the journal area. Okay. I mean, you do have, you know, your your four minions. You can always put them to work carrying shovel loads, right? Yeah. And uh, make sure one of you brings, and he points out the one of you, brings a flower sack for any extra items that uh, don't happen to be claimed yet. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. And uh, we'll find the biggest one we can meet, find. Meet me there <laughs> at uh, nine bells tonight. Right. And uh, y you'll see, you'll see where the the lamp lighters are. You know, meet meet me under the brightest lamp that you can see a block south of that location. Okay, so we get these screen swipe montages, these bot new booths, so you guys can hang out a little longer. As uh, anything you guys doing for prep work? Like is our warcaster putting on her armor? Because I'm assuming she doesn't wear it all the time. 100%. 100%. Okay. I'm going to make sure Jenny's as fully loaded as I can get him. And is anyone bringing a sack? Yes, you can find any sack on any alleyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to bring two, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> got just got pockets. Case. Already going for the upsell. Okay, so you guys, you know, show up at the appointed time. Do you show up early, show up late? I mean, you could totally show up way early and scout the place out if you want. Do we trust this guy? He hasn't screwed you over yet. But he does work for the government. I mean, in his defense, you guys haven't screwed him over yet either, so. Right. This is one of those, uh, you guys are an asset to him, not friends. And he is an asset to you and not friends. Right. That's totally up for character development to become one or the other. <laughs> yeah, no, um... Probably a little early. Okay. You know, I got to scope out some some spots. Okay, so you guys show up a little early, and oh, yeah. Calvis immediately cringes because he's like, "There's no clean lines of fire. 
Just, there's all these. I'm still like putting on the last pieces. I'm like, guys, we gotta give you a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought we said five. What are we doing here so early? Can someone tighten this nut on on my armor? <laughs> right. All right, all right. I'm ready. I'm ready. I think. Okay, so you guys have your cool montage walking down the street. So, uh, are you scouting out the location since you're showing up early? Yeah. Yeah, showing up early to scout scout the spot. See what we see inside, outside. Okay, so when you get there... You can see inside. Obvious and, and obvious <laughs> exits. Do we know anything about this place? Is it like in our neighborhood have we heard of this location before oh uh, why don't you give me a history check there we go oh okay oh maybe did i do it right so uh, you do know a little bit about nice. this area you definitely know that uh, it's got lots of rumors of alligators in the sewers so don't go to the sewers you know Lots of creepy things, because, of course, we are in the industrial complex, so it's a lot of big warehouses, big buildings. Uh, like I was saying, Callus is immediately cringing, because he's like, there's a total lack of line of sight here. I mean, there are rooftops that you can go to, but you would obviously stick out like a sore thumb on a rooftop. Okay. When he but we got to go in anyway, so. Yeah. When he cringes, I'm assuming he's scared, so I'm going to say, don't worry, sweet face. I won't let him kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I just roll my eyes at her. That high charisma has got you tagged with sweet face. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a carbine, not a sniper yep. rifle, so it's it's made for for sh short work yep. as well. So uh, sure thing, whatever you say, sweet face, whatever you say. <laughs> so how close are you getting to this place? I mean, you can clearly see. Well, it we'll kind of make our way. Yeah, we make our way from a distance, you know, peeking between buildings to get a shot on, you know, around. Well, that didn't show up well. Um, you know, so we can see what's at what, you know, what's at the dock. You know, what 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 we can see through this loading ramp, the other loading ramp, and then the back door. Okay, so are you guys being sneaky? Or are you just walking nonchalant? How are you approaching? Uh, I don't know how sneaky Gunny and I can be. I mean, you <laughs> yeah. totally have Gunny pick up a box in the alleyway and walk with the box like you're, you're delivering something. That's totally a thing Steam Jacks do every day. I mean, it's a common, common sight. Yeah. He is going to be so mad later on that I made him do menial <laughs> yeah. tasks. <laughs> yeah, more like flying casual. So, so not necessarily stealthy, but unobtrusive. Yeah, flying casual. Okay. So more of a deception -y is what you're saying, or or stealth? Yeah. 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 But yeah, we yeah. want to see, you know, what's going on there, 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 and there. Yeah, deception -y. And that might be me, because I'm like a... Uh, Plus four on deception, unless somebody else. Uh, Same. I, I am. I am not. I'm stealthy, but uh, no, no, I have one. Okay. I also have plus four. Okay, go for it. But I wasn't trying. No, no, go. Okay. Share the love, <laughs> and then you can take the blame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's. So disappointing. <laughs> so, are you guys going as a group, just like you're acting like some after work guys, or spread yeah. out? Yeah. yeah, probably kind yeah. of spread out a bit. Like you're just some chums walking down the alley. Yeah. And are you assisting each other? See how I throw that out there. Yeah. Okay, so it totally yeah. sounds like you're getting that natural twenty yeah. instead of that lowly seven. I like that. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so uh, as you know, you're you're kind of giving it the the casually we're wa walking down the alleys. Is uh, is our warcaster and steam jack going with you? Yes. I'm trying to get the map to where I can see it. <laughs> yes, 100. percent I'm there. 
Am I not on the screen? Uh, you, you guys, you, Where are we? this is this is just the the preview of the map. You, you guys oh. don't need to worry yeah. about being you know, on the screen because you're not you're not looking to fight. You're here early to scout the place out. So uh, okay, okay. I was afraid I had to move like I was supposed. Yes, yeah, I I'm, I'm there. So, Within range of each other, but like I said, we're not walking in a clump yeah, group together. Yeah, you're, you're not looking like a gang walking down the street. So you guys clearly see to the north here, this area goes up to the beach where there's some docks. And you could totally almost see what the watch were talking about, how they're going to come up on boat to make sure they don't leave the boats. Uh -huh. And uh, mm -hmm. you see the main driveway is basically to the south here. This, this is the streets that come up to this loading ramp. Uh, okay. Okay. And uh, as you guys collectively walk around, give me each a skill that you think makes sense. Because our our bard here is being super cash. He's he's smoking. He's joking. Gengosh is basically covering for you guys with his deception that you're just casually scoping the place out. Who's got another skill that can contribute? Hmm. Uh, well, I have, oh. I have nature. I have I'll I'll take a nature oh, roll. Yeah. Maybe I'll be able to tell you something. No, I have. Okay, so with Theo's nature nice. rolls, you guys are walking around. You clearly see when these doors open and close that uh, amongst their smuggled goods, they have lots of different shit in the warehouse. You know, it's all random piled. They're, these guys are total amateurs when it comes to, you know, their, their merch, you know. And uh, you mm. totally see that they are smuggling a bunch of different brands of uh, basically teas and herbs that should totally not be stacked together. You know, as you see, they've got they've got oh, the teas good. and the coffees with with some of the not so pleasant uh, herbs that you totally would not put the oleander with the uh, the the tea. Just saying. Great. <laughs> just a bunch of thugs. Do I happen to see any kind of magical stuff? Uh, can you give me an arcana check? One hundred percent. Oh, that's so sad. So uh, you do notice that there are some steam jack pieces in there that look like they've been carjacked, basically. You know, taken, stripped apart really haphazardly. Uh, you do notice there are some uh, barrels labeled with alchemical symbols that you recognize with your Ooh. time with Theo. That, uh, and they have the Golden Crucible's mark logo on them so you you're assuming with that are 15 that these are probably claimed items already but uh th there is some high-end retail stuff in there i mean the mere fact that there's a uh, warjack eye sitting on top of one of the alchemical barrels just irks you because you know you know it's corrosive what's in the barrel but what's on top of it should not be near anything corrosive these these jack jackasses We're gonna need more than one sound. <laughs> <laughs> so glad I bought two. And uh, right. what what skill is Callus gonna use there? Uh, I was looking. I don't know. Um, I was trying to see if there's a way to use sleight of hand, but um, I think that's really more the physical act is uh -huh. to knowing or identifying with it or having the you know the actual practice. The skills against yeah i was like wanting to maybe use that to pick out things that might come in handy that but, would be more of a perception um, yeah 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 um yeah probably just would be a standard perception just to see what i can see that might be in pers oh, hidden or you know watches or anything like okay. that you know lookouts hey, hey look at that not bad so uh you clearly know that if you wanted to rooftop sniper this would totally be the building it has easy access to the south to get up and it's actually the okay. safest one and least seen from the the street 
if you wanted to sniper from the roof. And you do notice, coincidentally, that uh, most of these guys, as I'm pulling some stuff up real quick. Most of these guys yeah, what are, armed are armed with? with simple clubs and swords, but a few do have uh, pistols. Okay. And of course, it's the single shot pistols. Mm -hmm. Which means they could get in a shot or two, but then they have to go hand to hand. Which yep. always makes you feel kind of happy. Okay. Well, if you want to mark which ones have pistoleros. That would be nice. And you do know that there's there's more people than the ones you're seeing that are out on guard duty. Those are just the ones right. that, are, that are, you know, at the door. I'm assuming there's some just, like, scrubs running yep. around, too. Yeah, right? there's some, some low-life good-for-nothings. Just laborers, yeah. Which probably could be scared off, so... All right. So numbers wise, when it comes to the pistols you're seeing, because that's good enough to get exact numbers if that's what you're looking for. You uh, I mean, only if see I miss one, I miss one, like but three or four that have pistols, which immediately makes you think, hey, I could take this without having to reload. Right. Because obviously, you know, Hopefully. the rest could take care of any hand-to-hand -hand combatants, because you don't do hand-to-hand, -hand, right? <laughs> That's a pure sign that something Yeah, failed. I got this! <laughs> <laughs> and cool. uh, you do notice that, oh, thankfully, right. these amateurs have no lookouts in the you know, upper levels of the building or anything like that, which you totally just shake your head, because you're just like... Seriously, who does this? These guys were asking to get taken right. out by somebody. With my history check, do I know, is this a rival gang? Oh, like, uh, never mind. I, you already said this. This is that Jackknives. Girl, yeah, right? they, yeah, but are the Jackknives affiliated with one of the larger groups? Uh, not that you know of. They're, they're basically a bunch of up and coming. They're not even locals. You know, they kind of moved in here, found this, this uh, warehouse. And by found, it could be that whoever owns it is letting them use it, because it is out owned by an outside you know, consortium. Consortium. So hmm. they're an invasive species. They, they are an invasive species. <laughs> well, then we need to uproot them. Hey guys, do we have like a backup plan if something goes bad in here? I mean, obviously we're going to tow it and everything, but like, uh, are we like lighting this place on fire and running? <laughs> Oh, I vote for the latter. <laughs> That's the backup fire? plan. Did you say fire? Number, yes. And, and I assume thing. you're having this conversation off-site, was... right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, Obviously, just sure fires are a bad thing. Fire. Remember, the laws of burning things down is, is bad juju. Oh, that's true. I'm sure oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm not my murder bot. Okay. Right. <laughs> we run them off. It's we might be able to come back and clear out some more stuff later. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll meet at our lamppost. Okay. So you guys go and kill some time since you, you showed up so early, and uh, you you show up at the appointed time and you see just just a single watch uniform sitting under the, the brightest lamp that's out there. People are purposely walking around it because why get involved with the cops when you don't have to? Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys walk up to him or what do you do? Because you know immediately when you get close enough, it's your buddy. It's Patchett. Yeah, okay. Then we'll From meander up that direction. Well, I think maybe one of us, I think if we all... <laughs> <laughs> kind of gather with the watch under the lamppost that might look a little suspicious. That's <laughs> uh, fine. I'll saunter up nearby. Okay. So as soon as you know you saunter up, he waits like half a breath and then uh, tips his hat in your general direction and comes walking towards you. And uh, he he does this super coy, pops his collar so it's a little more concealing of his face, and uh, he he. Reaches into his pocket, pulls out his pipe, and strikes his little sparker to 
light up the wick on his little little wick stick and lights you know his pipe up and he just says so uh and he kind of gestures down the street where the steam jack is standing at rest which can totally be heard from a while away with a slight glow on it and he as he's like so uh can can your you, one of your crew scout out the uh warehouse for us to let us know what to expect yeah we've already got all that handled you got a pair of of people at each doorway got a handful of uh, pistols otherwise clubs and swords and uh, you know handful of stuff inside but you know a lot of it looks like laborers but I'm sure there's somebody in there and he just kind of gives you the nod he's like so uh, I I knew you'd be the right pick I mean you guys have already checked it out ahead of time. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. And he kind of smiles at you like he kind of knew you guys would do something shady like that, but you know, <laughs> he, he's not admitting to knowing it. Did we get clarification yeah. if, uh, since we're being friends and he's the law, are we allowed to kill? Are we maiming? Are we doing? Are we just? Uh, from what you know from personal oh. history, these watch guys are probably going to come in and gun the shit out of everybody themselves. Right. <laughs> they 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 like to come home at the end of the night, and they don't do well with smugglers, especially out of town business. I mean, not a problem. Technically, sure from all you know, it could be one of the the captains is ordering to have this done. You know, because th- these guys are outside competition. You know, invasive right. species, as so, somebody yeah. said. Right. Yeah, so my thought is we come in from the south side, that should, if you give a delay, yeah, that should uh, draw, start them drawing towards that back door, and then, you know, you hit them from the dock side. And, and he smiles and nods and says, that's exactly what I was thinking. If uh, my, my my good, good friends can come in from the south, uh, from the north and uh East, on the northeast side, uh, we can have my team come in from that direction. So, do you think you can cover the south exit? I think we would be good. Okay, and he he, he kind of smiles at that and kind of does the sticks his hand out for that note back to see whatever address you wanted the uh, merch dropped off to. Right. And, and you know he takes it, kind of looks. You can see he memorizes it. And, lips move and he reads it a few times and kind of leans to get the lamp light to hit the letter and then puts it in his pocket and pats it and then uh, he's, he, he looks at you and says just just so you know I've made sure that the strike team knows not to uh, accidentally shoot in your general direction well, that's we appreciate so that As, <laughs> just so you know I made sure to tell Gunny not to kill you all <laughs> are, are you walking up and joining the conversation? Can I hear from no, where I'm at? Can I just be the best? No, we're, we're they're, talking, they're a good distance down the street second, talking in hushed tones. Yeah, because yeah. we don't want to announce to the whole neighborhood. So so I'm like, yeah, that's good. And we'll be sure not to shoot any of yours. Uh, unless they shoot and, back. And he looks at you and you just see the smirk <laughs> like he knows that uh, his men would not do well if you shoot at them. And and I appreciate yeah. not having to train any new recruits because we are yes since you're we short. are woefully using too many recruits on this raid, which is why I need the help. Yeah, and I would perceive a being injured as a slight. <laughs> <laughs> if you could uh, make sure none of your your compatriots uh, wound any of the blue coats. Yeah, like it. As long as they don't shoot anybody, we're good. Okay, and uh, he, he kind of hands you over a, a metal cylinder with a trigger on it, and immediately you know it's a flare tube, basically. It's a one-shot flare. And oh, okay. uh, he basically tells you that uh, – oh, and then he, like, absentmindedly reaches into his other pocket and pulls the second one out. That uh, the first one is, is, is blue, and you clearly see it's got a blue paint on the – the lip of the barrel that's to initiate the raid and uh if 
if you need reinforcements, the, the, the second one, the red flare, is there for that. Okay. And, uh, and he kind of scratches his chin. And he's like, I, I assume the, the ladies have brought a sack or two. Yeah, we're, we're they're he, all set. He knew what was up. He knew about <laughs> and, for the job. Don't, and don't worry. He'll have it all taken he, care of. <laughs> he, he gives you the nonchalant look, you know, the serious look of, uh, I, I have to stress, there are specific items we are here to recover. So I would uh, be very discreet in the sack that you fill up. Okay. As, as some items are still currently sought for recovery. And I would hate for one of those to end right. up in, in your possession by accident. That would, you know, garner so unwanted attention. Stay away from, so stay away from specialty things that look kind of fancy and personal. And, and he just gives you the subtle nod as he puffs on the pipe lighting up his face. Not a problem. And then he kind of like looks at the glow of his pipe and looks at you and he says, you know, often I am, I'm envious of you, Iosin, with your dark vision. I would, some day, some nights I would kill for being able to see in the dark like this. Yeah. You know, it's a strong trait to have. <laughs> As poor Theo's like half blind and out with you guys, you can all everyone but her can see. <laughs> Theo feels his pain. <laughs> That's why we're still here. And uh, he he basically puts his hand out to give you a handshake, you know. I'll shake Good luck, it. and he uh, kind of after the handshake reaches into his po another pocket in his coat of many pockets. Pulls out a nice little silver flask, takes a swig, and offers it to you. Sure. And you feel a little, little warm liquor run down the throat as he says, good hunting. And uh, when your team's you. in position, fire the blue flare. All right. And you should see two other flares in report good. to let us know that we're ready. From what I heard, the boat team should be ready. They're just waiting for your signal to come in fast. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, and then he. So they're gonna give. So they're gonna give their signal that they're in position. Uh, no, actually, you give your position, and oh, then okay. they respond. Okay. They're, you kind of get the okay. hint that they're hoping you'll drive them into the water. With flare coming from the coat, the the. the the shore as opposed to the water first. Yeah. They shoot the water flare. They're afraid they'll run into town instead of towards the boats. Right. And then okay. he tries to slink into the shadows forgetting that you have dark vision. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. I can still see you. Yeah. yeah. I want to kill this man so badly. He just is so wow. with all his pockets. Wow. Oh, I like him. Too many okay, so uh, <laughs> he basically is disappearing off to parts unknown, basically with his little team to the northwest. I mean, northeast. And you guys have the the run of the field for setting yourself up. Am I over by Theo? Uh, you guys are on the bottom of the map now. You've magically appeared. Things have changed. Like what's range? So these are five foot squares. Let me double check my tutor what his rifle range is. I mean, one of you moves really fast. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> yes, but I'm not worried about my movement. I'm worried about my... The carvings with my ranges. Let's see. So 50 to 150. And I will tell you with that really good perception that uh, up the alleyway, the two red circles are the ones with the pistols. Okay. And are you getting that close? Well, what's the lighting like? Lighting is here? Very, very light lamp light. So, like, their area here is nicely lit up, 
but uh, only the edges of this building here have light. So are you just going to walk down so it's and fairly, straight? To, fairly dim. Yeah, it's fairly dim, but are you going to just walk straight down and be seen? Or are you going to stealth, or how are you going to approach? Well, no, I'll probably stealth, but so I'll, I forget. You it's been a while, so it? with range. So 50 is effective range, and what is it if you're uh, outside of that? Disadvantage. Yeah, the second okay. number on range is for disadvantage if you shoot. Yeah. So, kind of here's my thought. Because if I'm you guys probably walk kind of scroll. here past this line without stealthing, you can be seen. They can totally see you down the, right. down the road, walk past these two lit up building corners. Yeah. So, here's kind of my thought. So, I'm going to stealth into position. Um, you guys can kind of hold back for a moment. And then... Uh, Unless somebody else can still up that direction um, and wants to join just in case. But, I mean, it's not like you're that far behind. Um, and then I'll give whoever the flare gun and I'm going to initially pop one of these guys. Then we'll shoot the flare. <laughs> okay. And this is this is a main road, this, not an this, alley? This is an actual road here. What you're standing on is a road. Okay. It's not like cobblestone or anything, but it's it's a well used wagon road. No. No, yeah. that just changes my thought. I'm pretty stealthy if you need me to come with you. And your war you didn't have in a your warcaster you suit, this. you're not very stealthy at all. <laughs> oh, I don't have my plus three? Oh okay. No, you you could you can wear um, you're wearing your armor. It just means that you're not you you're you're disadvantaged wearing the suit. It it okay. it has an active steam engine in it, so it's it's not that stealthy. I still offer. If you need help, please face Need help? Well, basically, once I shoot, that's going to be the signal to to move forward and do so then, who and engage. The but first, fire the flare as soon as I fire, or seconds after I fire the, the first round at the first guy. And then we're going in and killing everything, right? Yeah. Yep. Don't let anything escape. Yep. But, you know, why follow directions and light a flare and then they do all get all crazy and I want I want a clean shot at somebody first. Okay, okay so it sounds like uh, first thing that's happening is uh, you're going to try. Who are you giving the flare gun to? And do you, do you explain the red for backup? Somebody that somebody that. Yeah, um, whoever looks like they can handle one. Anyone can technically shoot. Probably not the troll. The air and click. <laughs> Definitely don't give it to well, Probably, probably one of the two smarter ones. And uh, well, then probably I should take it because as a uh, racial feature, um, I think I have. Uh, hold on, let me go back to my racial features. Um, yeah, uh, I get a plus one to attack rolls made with simple fire martial firearms, so I get a plus okay. one to it. Okay. I mean, it's just shooting something yeah. in the air, but it, yeah, I mean, you, but won't, I mean, you won't shoot it into a. Building I'm not gonna like burn and... something down unless you right. want to. You know. Yeah. yeah right. just, you know when? Tell me when I should. Uh, uh, give set about the a. Flare. Give about a you know five count, and after I pop around okay. off. Okay. So uh, sounds like we need to roll some initiative here. Remember, click on your token and then click in initiative on the character sheet. Yeah, the the word highlighted so it color, lights up and then click it. Oh yeah, I forgot. I almost didn't click on my character. Oh, I got a. Do I have to go? I have to go words. to significances, don't I? Oh, and that fits. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> sure, I waste a net 20 on initiative. <laughs> As all of a sudden, there's a huge delay in, in, in the dice rolls. Oh my gosh, am I going first? <laughs> well, remember, you can always, you can always skip your, your turn, you know. You can hold action. Yep. 
So, so. Oh, I probably want to do that. <laughs> oh, I need to fix that. Okay, even better. I'm not going first now. Much better. Okay, so Theo, are you are you just holding your action? Well, technically I'm holding action because I have the flare gun. So as soon as uh Callus shoots, I get my little five okay. count and so shoot then the flare. Callus, give me your stealth roll. I mean this is important because right. these guys are watching for trouble. Yeah, well, worst case I I snap shoot. That's okay. <laughs> or worst case, you oh shit roll a natural Ooh. one at. But oh no, it's not common. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> As uh, Kalos, oh you're never. He's got out. his weapon handy. <laughs> he, he, he's you know totally in combat mode. He's got his dead eyes ready. He looks at you guys, gives you the signal that he's ready to go. And he's go, go, go. And as soon as he comes out, he kind of runs through here. And obviously, they must have set up some kind of, you know, crap tripwire. That as soon as he goes and runs, you hear this loud clank, 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 clank. And immediately, these guys, uh, you know, kind of point out there and both draw their pistols out and are pointing in your direction saying, stop. Which guys? The guys right here. Good. Two guys, okay. yeah. So I go, they're just kind of like, oh, hey, what's happening? Ba-boom! Well, well the <laughs> stealth roll was your action. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. So okay, well. while you were trying to get in position, they, they clearly hear you and see you. Yeah. I'm like, oh, hey, what's going with, on? With your carbine out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you carry it. It's a rifle. I mean, you know. On the city street. Yeah, you got to carry it. Oh, so you can <laughs> Sometimes slung okay. across the shoulder is uncomfortable. Don't know who's out here in this time of night. As uh, these guys yell to this guy to uh, go inside, we got some trouble coming. And uh, they oh, they got their pistols <laughs> out, and they're basically coming up here. They're not shooting you. It's at the moment, but they are like a hair's breath. At the moment. <laughs> they are yeah. basically yeah, yeah. reading their action to shoot you if you point that gun in their general direction. All right. They they are coming close. Where's... It's kind of dark, so it's not helping mm-hmm. that they're in the darkness. But uh, they, they are... T- they're moving when it's a 5 in ish well, No, they're 19 in ish Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah. Two of them. Okay. Oh, the blue yeah. slide. Okay. And they have their pistols out and they're pointing at you and they're just totally doing the guard duty thing of like, don't do anything stupid. Just don't do anything stupid and you'll see the sunrise. <laughs> yeah, I just have like a no, shit, wrong place look on my face. And, and you know? sadly, you all hear this interaction happening in the, in, in the street. It's all right. Nobody's shooting. Some, some, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sweet face stepped in something sour. Oh. Not surprised. Well, not yet. <laughs> um, well, our plan is to get in there, and these guys are already looking hostile. They're, they're, they're definitely sounding hostile. You can clearly hear their shot, their shout of stop. Hammer time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Sorry. I'm going to... What, the five, ten. No shots are fired yet. Yeah. around the corner. Thirty. I'm gonna move. I'm Aww. going to do shoot an arcade bolt. Because I, I I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry, you guys. I thought it was 120 feet for arcade bolt. Yeah, right? you're you're well within range for that. Okay, I'm gonna shoot one of them with an arcade bolt, and then I'm gonna move up, and I'm gonna be sitting like, don't worry, sweet face. Oh, as she casts her magic spell, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> and which one are you shooting at? <laughs> Um, the one that's closest to Sweet Okay. Face. Or does, it does, is there one that's more hostile or closer? This, to this one is closer by a few feet. Okay. Did I do that right? 
Nope, hundred percent. I did not do that right. I'm it's sorry. okay. Remind me again how I do it. So on your character sheet. Because I have this momentary pause of like, did I add that spell myself? I don't know. Let me double check. Okay, you're looking in the center, right, where your attacks and spell casting is. I was. I should go back over there. I went back to the four. I'm sorry. Okay, spells. Yeah. Main oh. page. Okay. And then attacks and spell casting. If is the spell listed there? Yes. Then you click on the name of the spell. Should cast actually. Roll everything. Did. That's what I did. I could do it again. Um, hmm. Let me double check because I don't think I think this is on me. I don't think I added that one to your spell list. <coughs> but I oh. have the book because the dead trees are superior. So as you, we well, probably, I mean, it doesn't have to be on the spell list, right? You just need to have the configured there yeah. properly. So if you could click the cog, well, it's it's not on her character. See if it has sheet. attack. So uh, well, arcane bolt. I only put the name. I didn't actually put these the details on it. It's That's casting what I'm time yeah, is one action. The cog. Range is sixty feet, which I definitely think you're within range, right? It yeah. is a verbal, somatic, yeah. and runic spell which means when she does it these beautiful magic runes around her hand as she shoots the bolt so if you're a fellow runic caster you could almost interpret what the spell is and try to try to you know deactivate it if you know magic these guys do not know so make a ranged spell attack against the target on a hit it takes 1d10 force damage so roll a d20 and add what is your intel? Your intel is three. Add five to it. Oh, you're not putting that in? I haven't put it in yet. Oh, okay. So to yeah, move along. So, so go yeah. ahead and uh, on the dice pool on the side there, roll a 1d20 plus five. 20 plus five. Please be good. And that will definitely hit. Nice. So go ahead and roll 1d10 force damage. No extra jazz. Five points of arcane damage. As you basically, you know, you go arcane bolt and run up there and hit him for five points of damage and, you know, let sweet face know you got his back. That's so good. And I'm going to smile and wink. He's never living this bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at him like, Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, so, that goes off. I'll fire the flare. Okay. Because the shot was fired. Yep. So Theo had her action ready to shoot the flare off people. as the glow of magic firing down the, the street there. Theo, Theo goes, okay. Take. And the, I see a sign. The little flare goes. She's like, somebody shot. So. And the, the blue light of the flare just cracks. And then, like a good hair's breadth after, you see two more flares shoot up, one to the northeast and one almost straight north of you guys' location. As you hear lots of shouts and stuff coming out. And uh, is Gunny doing anything? Yeah. Gunny, uh, Gunny's going to move on up here, right? right As the you. steam check just starts running yeah. out. And that's where they start shitting. He does, like, a really cool... Around. Because I telepathically tell him to battle. He does like a really cool, like, he takes his hand and kind of pounds on his chest because he's ready. <laughs> and he, he, okay. he does the wrestling moment. He doesn't have like a little. Moment. He doesn't he have like a little. Sarah run if y'all like. <laughs> doesn't have a little steam whistle that he toots as he's running into combat. <laughs> combat. <laughs> yeah. No, man. No, well, no. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Back up, boys. Okay, anything else for Gunny? <laughs> I can totally like, boop, boop. As you totally see these two guys that were worried about the guy with the rifle, all of us would go, they've got a steam jack. <laughs> I'm so, my character is so excited that they're afraid of me and not, not <laughs> Okay, so pretty much at that exact moment, this guy is going to go running in, and he's going to throw open the door and then run inside, and he starts shouting and yelling, We're under attack! 
And of course, somebody says something stupid like, yeah, get, dude, we saw the flares. Bad plan. Bad plan. <laughs> it's a bad plan. It was just firework revelies. I mean, fireworks revelies. aren't that uncommon. I mean, we have gobbers with the rigs, right. which is like second-story buildings made out of just rope rigging that the short little gobbers live on. They like fireworks. It's only burned down a few times. Who doesn't like fireworks? So, so right? Gargosh, you love discipline. You love a plan. You've rubbed your face because you realize discipline has gone out the window. <sighs> the plan did not last the first two seconds. <laughs> it did plan not, B already. The plan C. <laughs> did not last contact with the team. So. But I had the plan. The elves are down the alley starting to okay, So it's time to make these two um, these two fellers piss their pants. Um, can I use thaumaturgy to um, create the sound of a Trollkin warband running up the road from behind us, and then lead the charge with a with a with a Trollkin battle cry running into view, so that they see one and hear a lot more. Okay, I, I will definitely take that for thaumaturgy, as as literally there's a uh, whew, cacophony of of, of Trollkin sounds coming out of there. And then I I charge up. Screaming a war cry, making myself look as big and mean and trollkin like as possible. And I just want to <laughs> make them piss their pants and run. Do me, f- but that's how you make it. Do me a favor and give me uh, intimidation with advantage. Uh, for performance, uh, intimidation. With a fifteen, as as you guys see that. They're 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 kind of shaken here. That's right. They know the forsaken's here. <laughs> God. Okay, so uh, they they kind of were ready to shoot that guy with the rifle. Then they were gonna shoot the steam jack, and now they have a trollkin army coming down, charging. <laughs> As as they are, they are definitely a little little scared. A little confused. <laughs> I mean, who pissed off the uh, Trollkin? <laughs> it must have Everyone been knows you let the Trollkin win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. And that's a good place to wrap it up there. Thank you for listening to D&D Journey of the 5th Edition, a member of the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Please follow us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash CPPN to never miss a show or stream. 